Hi boys and girls, this is Mr. Wassman, and today we are looking at properties of quadrilaterals. We are in our math journal on page 59, and you will also see that uh, I have a PDF attached of uh, quadrilateral cards. Now, if you are learning about these in class, uh, live with uh, an actual teacher, uh, he or she will provide you a paper copy of these. If you are learning virtually, like uh, my students are in uh, f the fall of 2020, then uh, you will have to uh, download the PDF and maybe print them off. Or you can just use uh, the visual that I provide here to help you do some sorting. But let's take a look at what it is that we're being asked to do. It says sort the quadrilaterals from MathMasters page TA18 into three groups. That's this right here. Then describe the properties you use to form each group. So as you can see, each group has one letter in each box. So for example, group one okay, has the letter A in there. So let's take a look at letter A, this shape. So when we think about properties or classification, we, we need to look at traits. What does this shape have that some shapes may also have, but other shapes may not. Well, as I uh, survey all the different quadrilaterals that are possible, I'll notice that, for example, letter F has square corners or 90 degree angles. This shape does not. Okay, So that would not be a, a descriptor to help describe this shape. It does, however, have pair of parallel sides here and here. It also has another pair of parallel sides here and here. So it, this shape has two pairs of parallel sides. So that's a good way of thinking about uh, a quality that this shape has. Okay, So down for uh, 1B, all the quadrilaterals in group 1 have this property in common. And the property is two pairs of parallel sides. Now, all quadrilaterals have four sides. Not all quadrilaterals have four sides that are broken up into two sets of parallel sides. Okay, So for example, if I look at B right here, none of those sides seem to be parallel. Neither do the ones in C. Okay, D has one pair of parallel sides right here, but the other pair is not parallel. So you'd have to go like this. So that doesn't work. Okay. So I would just go through each shape and ask myself, where are my parallel lines? Okay. So if I take a look at F, even though I did not use the uh, right corners or right angles as a descriptor, this shape has two pairs of parallel lines, like so. So I could say F could fit into my category here. So right up here, I would write the letter F. And then I would continue to hunt for shapes that have two sets of parallel lines. Now I do a quick scan of the shapes here, and it looks like other shapes that might qualify are I and J, and L, and along with N and O, okay? If I zoom in on O, okay, it's what you would call a diamond, but is in actuality considered to be a rhombus. A rhombus is a shape that has two pairs of equilateral parallel sides, okay? Meaning all four sides are the same length, okay? And they're in two sets of parallel lines. So O would also be a shape. So in my box for group one, 
I want to list other shapes that qualify. So that's I, J, L. Oop, I missed one. K. K also has parallel lines there. So I, J, K, L, N, and O. So let me write those down. I, J, K, it's hard to do this when there's two screens. L, L, N, and O. L, N, and O. Okay. So how does that compare to shape H, which is our second group? Okay. H is a trapezoid, and a trapezoid is defined by having one pair of parallel lines like so, but then a pair of lines that are not parallel, because if you were to extend those lines indefinitely, I don't have a very steady hand today, but as you can see, at some point, they would intersect, so that makes them not parallel. So H is a shape that has one pair of parallel sides. So I would go through the, uh, the different shapes and I'd ask myself which of these have one pair of parallel lines. So as I look at the other pictures, the one that jumps right out at me is the one right above H, which is D. Okay, D has one pair of parallel lines, as I've already pointed out, but not two. So I could add D to my list. So as I survey the rest of the shapes, uh, I also notice that M has one pair of parallel lines. They're the ones on the sides here and here. Okay, so that works. So, so far what I've been able to find is that in group two, quadrilaterals that have one pair of parallel sides are H, D, and M. Now, something to ponder. Okay. Would A fit into that category too? Well, when I look at A, I see that it has two pairs of parallel sides. But technically speaking, we could say that it also just, uh, that it has one pair of parallel sides too, at least. Okay. As a qualifier for being an part of this group, we can say that uh, A has one pair of parallel sides. It also has two pairs of parallel sides. Okay, So all the, the letters that we identified belonging to group 1, technically speaking, can also be put in group 2. Okay, Now, that seems confusing. Okay, because you were asked to sort the, all the shapes into three groups. So if I were to cut these shapes apart and make three separate piles, I couldn't have A in two piles at once. Okay, so if the qualifier is having two pairs of parallel sides versus one pair, I might have to uh, modify my descriptor here and instead of saying just one pair we add in the phrase only. Only tells you and I that it can have one, but only one pair. Okay, So that would disqualify all the shapes in, in group one for having two pairs. I'm just looking for shapes that just have one pair. Okay, So if I use the 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 scripture only or the trait that it only has one, then I can't incorporate any of the shapes from the first group. So we're going to get rid of that there. There we go. So by the process of elimination, I now have to figure out what's in the remainder of my groups. Okay? So I've already eliminated A, F, I, J, K, 
L, N, O, along with H, D, and M. Okay, so you're probably guessing what's the pattern here. So if I look at shape E, E is an interesting polygon. It has four sides, but it's not one that we typically think when we say polygon. We think square, rectangle, maybe trapezoid. This shape here, letter E, has no sides that are parallel. None of these sides uh, are parallel because all these lines intersect if you were to extend them out. Okay? So E is a shape that has no parallel sides. Okay? And that's how I would define that shape. So all the leftover shapes would fall into this category. No parallel sides. And that, my friends, is how you would go approach these problems. So whatever's left in this gallery of shapes, that would be uh, E along with B and C and G and P, those shapes would go into that last box. So again, if we had cut all these out and sorted them into piles, I would now have all my shapes into three different piles. Okay? So go ahead and uh, organize your last group by putting those letters in, and then answer question number two. Uh, where would this shape, shape X, belong? We've, we've got a, an outlier that was added in at the last moment. What would I do with this shape? How would I define it? Okay? If you have questions about this activity or quadrilaterals in general, please reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, we will talk again soon, friends. Thanks.